Welcome back, everybody. As you can see, we have That's just cleared this everything. little ice blockage right here with our incinerate. And right now, I am holding very still so as not to disturb that splicer over there. This is one of the scenes that they set up throughout the game. And it rewards you for having the drop on this guy. If you just run forward unthinkingly, he will become enraged and thrust this little gurney here against the wall, scattering these bandages around the room. But, if you get the drop on him, then you can quite nicely grab up all of the uh, little drops. Oh, goodness. Was not paying attention to that. Let's get this hacked. There is a rocket turret right here as we start the level, so definitely want to pay attention to that. We'll do horrible, horrible things to you if you give it half a chance. Now, let's just set up this hack so we can have it on our side and we'll be in a much better position. Those little corkscrew things are better used early on, but there's, generally speaking, no use for them this early in the game since most hacks are ridiculously easy as they stand. Oh, come on. Anybody? What are you firing at? Is there someone in that room? Oh well. He's not bothering me, so I guess I can let it be. Hmm. Lots of cabinets around here. This is a little bit of a secret grate that I can head on through for a little bit of a reward. Oh. Trial, lot of 44, Dr. Su Chong, client Fontaine Futuristics. Subject age white male, one Roland Wallace. Can you hear me, Mr. Wallace? Yes, sir, Mr. Stuchong, sir. Very well. Right, I'm introducing Lot 44 now. We've called the name the Lot 44 Enrage because of its tendency to... As you can tell, clinical trials did not necessarily go according to plan. Yeah, that is the uh, testing of their newest plasmid, Enrage, which is honestly not too effective unless you're facing a group of enemies. And since that usually is pretty easy to take care of with various means such as AoEs or other plasmids, I tend to stray away from actually taking Enrage as it takes up a whole plasmid slot. You only get two this early game and even later on in the game it's still a better idea to replace that with more, slightly more useful plasmids. But yeah, you can knock these grates right off and they, if you can not glitch through them, they open the way to little secret chambers like this one with a lot of free stuff. This one, Wrench Jockey, is one of the combat tonics that is very useful. It allows you to do a whole lot more damage with your wrench here, which means you're going to be a lot safer when taking on enemies in melee, or if you get caught out with... Ooh. Hello, you. They're so great about scripting those encounters. You'll find that a lot of the game actually is scripted, and that most of it plays out the same way every time, but it really forces you to keep alert, keep paying attention, and really never lose sight of what you're doing. Otherwise, you are going to get caught out by all of the wonderful little ambushes everywhere. Here we go, one of my favorite weapons in the game, the shotgun. Admittedly, they make you pay the price for it. As you can see, they thrust you into darkness, put you in the middle of a little of arena, and then just throw a ton of splices at you. There we go. Anybody else? Anybody else? Sounds like there is. No? No, good. Luckily, they are nice and kind of apologize for it with some free med packs. And you can just come right back and pick up some of those bandages if you were smart about that encounter. But, yeah. They really ambush you rather hard for, in exchange for handing you the shotgun. Which is fair, to be honest. 
Oh, here we are. Tenenbaum again. At the German prison camp, they put me to work on genetic experiments on other prisoners. They call me Das Wunderkind, the wonder child. Germans. All they can talk about is blue eyes and the shape of forehead. All I care about is, why is this one born strong and that one weak? This one smart, that one stupid. All that killing. You think the Germans could have been interested in something useful? Yeah, Tenenbaum is just, from the very start, made out to be a very sympathetic character. She seems almost uncaring in her mannerisms and her very scientific outlook on life and her goals. But at the same time, she's immediately cast as the most humane of all the scientists. She's already displaying dissent towards the German uh, eugenics, and she just wants to help people. Yes, this. Work on telekinesis plasmid proceeding well. Lifting objects at distance presents no problem. Moving objects through space, no problem. Cannot stop speeding bullet, but can catch and throw a faster moving object. Problem not with plasmid. Problem with reaction time. Yep. Su Chung just get new idea for plasmid. Such a twisted individual, Su Chung. I'm gonna replace incinerate because it's the most Your worthless of the two. You can even catch grenades and throw them back. Evolve today. God, I love it. Just everything about this game, as I've said, it just oozes style. Knocking that down will get you some of these little goodies, and it it just does everything so well. Always managing exactly how you're playing the game, what you're seeing as you're going through it, and making sure that you're always getting that sense of style that just pervades the area with those little cutscenes and all sorts of other great little nods. This little ambush is rather nice. They stick you with a turret in that room, but allow you to come around oh, if you can avoid glitching again. It's not the most precise game ever, but it's really great nonetheless. There we go. And you can immediately hack that and it will cover you a little bit later in the level if you're getting into that. Come on. There we go. That's the one I need. That's the one I need. And here we have it. It's one hack turret and it's only past one square. You can see how ridiculously easy it is in the beginning of the game. It activates that door control. Would have been locked if I'd have tried it from the other side. And, once again, a bunch of bandages leading you into this room. Into this little trap that they've set up for you. They immediately stick you in here with a corpse. And they allow you to see this little plasmid out of the corner of your eye. But wait. Yes, immediately once the second little blast triggers, they stick you with that. Splice it right behind you. Such a tiny imagination. Content to sit there with the tanks of Adam tweaking and optimizing. I need to create. Adam is a canvas of a genetic modification. But the plasmids are the paint. Like I said, they're just doing such a great job of establishing Tenenbaum's character. The enemy of my enemy, as they say, and if the other scientists dislike her, then she must be a great guy, because all the other scientists are friggin' psychopaths. It's just those little things of how they set up her character and the game in general that really make this game one of the best I've ever played. Everything just comes together in such a fine way. All the lovely se oh, almost forgot, where am I heading? That's right. Sometimes it gets a little bit confusing with the level design, but uh, that's going to be even worse later, so I'm not going to touch on that too much just yet. I want to make sure I hack this, otherwise it will make dealing with the rest of the people in here rather difficult. You know what, let's not be greedy. Let's wait a moment before we start heading on up in the world. 
That should be plenty. Uh, this one. And do we ha not have any horizontal pieces? Almost none. I was kind of worried there for a moment. But yeah, I already just got a plasmid that reduces the speed the of the electricity, so I'm really in a good spot to be hacking all these things. Anybody in here? Not yet. Oh, I'm full up on buck ammo, so I should probably start showing off my shotgun. One of the most iconic weapons in this game, and it just makes such short work of enemies, especially if you're good about getting headshots. Which makes a lot of sense, to be honest. A headshot with a shotgun is pretty much going to sick you in the ground, no matter who, who you are. Nice anti-personal rounds for to reward you for exploration. And I'm just going to kill this camera. Nice little one-shot with the shotgun. And it shows that most of the uh, electronics you can break can still be looted. So it's a little bit nicer about that than some other games where uh, drone-type enemies are just part of the world, even if you kill them, you can't loot their bodies or anything. And that's just another safe down. Lots of special rounds, I'm actually full up on the pistol rounds, well, at least the armor-piercing ones, and I just get a bunch of extra ammo as well. I was just checking my electric buck there, and it seems I've got nine shots, that's quite a lot, and should come through in fine fashion for me a little bit later. I have a very particular use for the electric buck in this game, and it's extremely valuable for that cause. Let me just check, make sure I've cleared out everything here. The secret paths through the, uh, whatchamacallit, little vents never really show that you've explored them, but you quite clearly have. Leave those bandages there for later, and time to follow our objective beacon. Oh, this guy. There we go. Not too much of an issue just yet. So long as he keeps just throwing out smoke screens, I should be fine. And yeah, a little bit of a kamikaze move on his part. Any leak is a bad leak. Huh. wonder how that lockbox got there. And why it just kind of stuck around for all this time. No big deal, though. I can still just come right on here through to the objective. Yes, aesthetics are a moral imperative. Oh. Now that we have telekinesis, we can clear that rubble with his explosives and head on to the final encounter. I'll get to that audio log in just a sec, but... I want to show off Steinman being a badass. No, God! He'll ruin everything! Get him! Have your harpy stare him to bits! You can see by that little red emanating aura on his head that he's actually in control of this security bot. And so it's really nice that they're just very clear about the hazards in this game. Anytime you have an enemy that's going to pose a bit more of a threat than usual, they make sure to give you that information one way or another. And there you have it. I now have this lovely security bot, and there's another one down at the end of this hallway. Today, if I can get to it in time. Ah, yes. Simon is just going completely bonkers at this point. Oh. None of that camera. Oh, come on. Whew. Almost didn't get it in time. Eve hypo. Nothing there. And yeah, as you can see, we are full up on armored piercing rounds, so I don't need to be worrying about those anymore. At least for the pistol. 
like a scalpel. Stein, she calls. Stein, I have what you're looking for. Just open your eye, and when I see her, she cuts me into a thousand beautiful pieces. Yeah, if that's not depraved, I don't know what is, really. Steinman is a really messed up dude, and his psyche is unstable to say the least. They're very good about giving you a lot of first aid kits now that we're about to come up against our first boss. And that should really just be a major tip that, hey, be careful. Ah, uh, such wonderful, wonderful side things. Adam denies us any excuse for not being beautiful. Isn't that the truth? What can I do with this one, Aphrodite? She won't stay still. Mm. Sickening. I want to make them beautiful, but they always turn out wrong. That one, too fat. This one, too tall. This one, too symmetrical. And now, what's this goddess? An intruder. He's ugly. 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 Yeah, he doesn't take too kindly to your presence here. That being said, he's the first boss in the game, and I have a little drone, so he shouldn't put up too much of a threat. Oh, missed that one. Especially because headshots deal so much damage. There's a bunch of room to kite around, and it looks like he's really focused on my helper at this point. Oh. This is one of the nasty things about the encounters. Oh. He tries to go off and heal if you give him the opportunity. You all right? It was time somebody took care of that sick bastard. Make sure you get the key off, Stoyman. And head back to emergency access. I'm working my way to the back side of Port Neptune myself. We'll get there soon enough. With safes, you really want to make sure that the first thing you do is extend the first little segment of the hack because they usually set you off in the wrong direction and with only one or two things in a row that is going to lead you out of it. As you can see, they really don't want you to be down on any first aid kits after this encounter, especially because they're going to throw you into a few more encounters a little later on that might be a little bit more intensive, let's say. Looks to be that I've gathered everything here. And this. Yes. For o silk and uh. The nose looks terrific, Dr. Steinman. Doctor? You know, looking at it now, I didn't realize how much your face sags. Scalpel? Excuse me? Scalpel. Uh, doctor, she's not booked for a facelift. Let's just come in here and... Doctor, stop cutting. Doctor, stop cutting. Get me the chief of surgery. Get me the chief of surgery now! Someone get the nurse. Yeah. Steinman, pretty messed up dude. Not somebody you want to. Do not approach the Oh. Yeah, accidentally pressed that. Thank you, Atlas. Welcome to Rapture, the world's fastest growing pilot joke. A little flashback there. As you can see, can't really go that way anymore, so this side path finally opened up. Big Daddy? Not appreciating this, but yeah. This is their introduction to the it's little just sisters. You and me and all of the tasty Adam I can drink. Stay away from her, or it is you who will be shot next. Easy now, Doctor. He's just looking for a wee bit of Adam. Just enough to get by. I'll not have him hurt my little ones. It's okay, lad. That's not a child. Not anymore, it ain't. Doctor Tenenbaum saw to that. Peter, do not hurt her! Have you no heart? Aye, oh, that's a pretty sermon coming from the ghoul who cooked up them creatures in the first place. Took fine little girls and turned them into that, didn't you? Listen to me, boy. You won't 
survive without the atom those things are carrying. Are you prepared to trade your life, the lives of my wife and child, for ten and bounce little Frankensteins? Here! There is another way. Use this. Free them from their torment. They never explain what that is. Somehow. That's my one real critique of this scene, is that they never explain what that vial she tosses you is. Only that it allows you to rescue the little sisters instead of harvesting them. I'm going to go and rescue no, this one. No, no, just because no. it gives you a little bit less Adam, but you don't need as much Adam early game. You can't spend no. it on very much worthwhile things in the beginning. Thank you. Aw, how cute. It's a little sister. All the imagery of chains. Love it. Gatherers garden machines. Make sure you pick up a new plasma or two. That's at the price ain't too dear, of course. Gatherers gardens, you say? How convenient. <laughs> it really is kind of silly, but yeah. Let's grab that up, and I'm gonna be using the Evelink physical tonic. That was the last one. Engineering, physical, and combat tonics as I don't have one, and I believe Armored Shell is actually a better choice for my empty slot. I think I actually missed out on a plasmid somewhere back there. There's supposed to be a another one of those combat tonics that allows you to uh, emit electricity when you're struck in melee combat, but it's kind of useless for the most part since thuggish splicers are the weakest of the splicers. Yeah, that's a big daddy over there, and it's my job to take it out. The rest of that um, audio log was just talking about how Tenenbaum considers it similar to removing a patient from life support rather than actual euthanasia, since they, the little sisters can no longer live without the slug inside them. Oh, hello. Yeah, he does not appreciate you getting close to his little sister, and who can honestly blame him? Just gonna pull out all the stops on this one, and now the electric buck. If you're in close range with the big daddies, it actually stuns them. So, it's definitely something you want to pull out for these special encounters. As you can see, a full clip with a little bit of help from the bots and drones has already got the big daddy down to half health. The security drone is really great just because it draws aggro. And that's all she wrote. That bouncer, pretty dead. This little sister, lucky I found her and rescued her. Because most are not so kind. The other benefit, well actually the only real benefit to rescuing them, is that Tenenbaum will reward you for saving her little sisters, rather than just giving you slightly more Adam. I think I am just going to do a full playthrough of rescuing them, rather than taking their full rewards of Adam. And that's because Tenenbaum actually gives you some Adam within her drop, so you're not losing out on much. And it's just a few nice bonuses as well. Yeah, this guy is going to be causing us problems, let's say. What's the matter, Mary? You look like you were... However, I have a lot of cash, and I want to stock up on some of this electric buck. And what else am I missing out on? 
I'm actually extremely well stocked to go forward here, so I'm just gonna take what I have with me. Ow. Blighted Splicer. And yeah, my security drone's about to die as well. Headshots. Best way to take these guys out. However, they drop a friggin' grenade when they die, so you might want to be careful about that. Security alert deactivated. Thank you for your patience. I don't know how you managed it, but you did. Come through to Port Neptune now. I'm looking forward to shaking your hand. There you have it. That was the introduction to Rapture and all the insanity that can be found within. Now we're going to head on over to Neptune's Bounty. And that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching.